So some of you may have noticed on HeadFi's forums that a new Odyssey headphone was teased in an ad from the Absolute Sound magazine that somebody posted. Now, no other information is followed, just one low-key photo of an upcoming Odyssey headphone called the EL8. With no information about the Odyssey EL8 beyond the teaser photo in that ad, there has been some speculation about what it is. Well, let's end the speculation and introduce the Odyssey EL8. This is the open version of the Odyssey EL8. Yes, there will also be a closed version, but I haven't heard that one yet. Now, both of these models will be introduced at CES this week, and the Odyssey EL8, either open or closed, will be priced at $699, making it the most affordable Odyssey model to date. It's a single-sided magnet design, which also makes it the lightest Odyssey headphone to date, weighing just 460 grams. New technologies were developed, some patent pending, to get Odyssey performance out of it for only $699, and I'll touch on some of that technology in just a minute. In the HeadFi community, sound quality is the most important thing, and I hope it will continue to be that way. However, over the last few years, a lot of HeadFiers, myself included, are coming to the conclusion that styling, comfort, and sound quality do not have to be mutually exclusive. Especially where portable headphones are concerned, many, even in the HeadFi community, are expecting headphones to not just sound good, but also to look and feel good. With headphones from Sennheiser like the Momentum, Bowers & Wilkins headphones, Bang & Olufsen's H6, Sony's Attractive Offerings, Oppo, Vmoda, Biodynamic, and other premium brands focusing on better looking headphones that also sound great, we're coming to expect more and more that we can have great sounding headphones that are also comfortable and look great. Odyssey's emphasis on design with the EL8 to make its styling and comfort have even wider appeal, while still offering Odyssey quality sound will make the EL8, in my opinion, one of the biggest, most important headphone launches within the HeadFi community this year. In fact, its styling and sound will likely push Odyssey onto more heads and over more ears outside the HeadFi community than ever before. Again, its design is a very big deal. To do what they did with the design, Odyssey partnered with BMW Design Works and nobody I've shown this headphone to has been anything less than enthusiastic about its looks. Now, one person I've shown it to has so far had any qualms about the idea of wearing a headphone that looks like this out and about. Also, and just as important, the design of this headphone also speaks to an emphasis on comfort and ergonomics that we would generally only expect from much larger companies, like Sennheiser, Sony, Harman, and other much larger operations. The Odyssey EL8's tooling and construction is definitely a departure for such a boutique maker of headphones, and to partner with BMW Design Works, a company that I believe has designed for Sennheiser before, and obviously has also designed automobiles like the BMW i8 and i3 and even Rolls-Royce, is an amazing thing to see from a company like Odyssey. They even re-engineered the cable connectors, coming up with a very unique new plug and jack that makes the headphone's cable easier to insert and remove than any other headphone cable I've previously used. And it has very nice, stable signal contacts too. Of course, none of this would matter, especially to a head fire if the EL8 didn't sound good. And no worries there, the EL8 is an Odyssey through and through. In fact, this open EL8 is one of the most open, best imaging Odysseys I've heard so far, perhaps owing a bit to its single-sided magnet structure. Now, to get the performance they were after at a $699 price point, Odyssey had to innovate, including patent-pending new technologies. Among the new technologies is a magnet structure they're calling Fluxor Magnetic Technology. This new patent-pending magnetic design uses a novel magnetic array that very uniquely directs magnetic flux density in the direction it matters most, nearly doubling the magnetic flux density of the highest-grade neodymium magnetic circuits available. Odyssey is also innovated in the area of diaphragm design. The remarkably thin 2-micron diaphragm uses a new patent-pending technology that Odyssey is calling Uniforce Diaphragm Technology. It's the first diaphragm in the industry to use variable trace widths in the voice coil to capture variations in the magnetic field within the magnetic gaps, the idea being to equalize the forces on the individual traces. This improves the diaphragm's pistonic motion and thus reduces distortion and improves resolution and imaging too. I've seen results from their labs from a lot of their development and testing along the way that I hope to provide you with more detail about after CES, showing the impressive R&D efforts Odyssey has poured into the EL8. As for its performance, the open version of the Odyssey EL8 is, to my ears, perhaps the most technically capable headphone available currently at that price. I mean, it's a beast. I haven't yet heard the closed EL8 again, but I will soon and will comment on that one later. The open EL8 I have heard is very much a sibling to the Odyssey LCDX. 
I have to do more direct comparisons, but if the LCDX is more resolving, it ain't by much. And again, my initial impressions suggest that the EL8 may be the most open sounding Odyssey I've heard so far, and we have the entire current lineup of Odysseys here. In terms of its tonal balance, the Open Odyssey EL8 is more monitor-like, like the LCD-X. The latest LCD-3 Phaser, Odyssey's nearly $2,000 flagship, is still the lusher-sounding headphone and will likely remain my favorite Odyssey for now. But there's no doubt the EL8 performs every bit like an Odyssey and has Odyssey sound and for only $699. Again, I think the EL8 will be one of the most significant headphone announcements in our community this year for its design and, of course, for its performance at the price. So there's a lot more still to be said about it. And and again, I still have yet to hear the closed one. I believe both models of the EL8 will be available for sale as early as February 2015, and I have a feeling it may in time eventually overtake the LCD2 as the most talked about over $500 headphone on our forums. We hope to have more information about the Odyssey EL8 for you from CES 2015, so stay tuned. Now, thanks for watching this episode of HeadFi TV with an exclusive first look and listen to Odyssey's new EL8. We'll see you again soon.